So with it, I want to introduce to you my wife, uh, my friend, um, one who has been laboring in the ministry for a while, um, a mother and a uh, sister and a grandmother. Or should I say a granny, she called herself. And one who truly loves the Lord. For those who do not know her, I don't know the introduction like everybody else does it, but I'm just going to say, for those that don't know her, this is an opportunity to get to know her. And this is an opportunity for you to grow. If you just, and I, this is one of my favorite things I like to say, if you open. Uh, so if you put your hands together, put your hands together for evangelist Tracy Bird. Thank you so much for that. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you on tonight, Father God. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your grace, oh God. I thank you for your faithfulness, Father God. For great is your faithfulness, Father God. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And Lord, I stand before you on tonight, Father God. And Lord, I just want to be used by you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray that you would speak through me, oh God. I pray that I would decrease, oh God, and that you would use me for your glory, oh God, that you will be glorified, that you will be exalted, oh God, that you will be high and lifted up. It's not about me, oh God, but I just pray that you would use me, Lord. I ask you, I implore you, oh God, to just use me, that you will get the glory. I thank you on tonight, oh God. And I bless your holy name. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. I just thank you guys for this opportunity to speak on being commissioned. And I first of all give honor to God, which is definitely the head of my life. I give honor to Pastor Bernard Crawford Jr. and his lovely wife, Evangelist Prophetess Trina Crawford. And of course, I can't leave out my boo, Pastor Bird. <laughs> I just thank God and... Sometimes you just be so, it's, it's just an unexplainable feeling how God will make you feel sometimes. And you just sit back and you just realize how blessed you are. How blessed we are. We are some blessed people. And a lot of times we take that for granted. We take it for granted. And so I won't be before you long. My message is really short because... We know what we're supposed to do. We know what we have been commissioned to do. We know, and a lot of us don't want to do it because we want to stay in sin. We don't want to do the things that we're supposed to do, and we use it as an excuse to not be free to serve God. So, um, and I just want to thank God also because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And he just keep on opening doors for me. Doors that I'm not even qualified for, to be walking through. He keep opening doors for me. I have been blessed on my job. I have been elevated to an epi uh, epidemiologist. I have been elevated from my position. And with the increase that will blow your mind. That will blow your mind. And, and I have the, I don't even really have the experience to be in this position, but I'm just thanking God. When you are faithful, God will bless your socks off, as my husband said. He will bless you. He will bless you. And when you are a faithful tither, the Bible says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over with me and give it to your bosom. I am a witness of what God is capable of doing. And there is but you gotta get in alignment and you gotta trust God and get out of sin. Sin keep resonating in my mind. Get out of that sin you are in. Quit using that sin for an excuse to be where you at. I'm gonna go to the script. The, the theme scripture is John 17, 6 to 9. I forgot my glasses. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Yeah. 
Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. And that's one thing we got to have faith. we got to believe. We have to believe. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And the scripture I want to use tonight is, um, is Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will recover. This is a promise, y'all. These are promises of God. And we know that God is a man that he cannot lie. Yeah. These are promises. If we just get in line and, and do these things that he is commanding and commissioning us to do. That's right. And it's just so much power in the word of God where it's saying these signs will follow those who believe. Why is it so hard for us to believe as Christians? Why is it so hard for us to believe in a God who cannot lie? In the God who cannot lie. Okay. John 20 and 21. We are commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ to serve fathers, it says. As the Father has sent me, it said he has also sent us. And this elevates the value and importance of servanthood. Knowing that we are commissioned provides clarity in service. So when we know, it provides clarity. It provides understanding in our service of what we are to do. Since we are sent the same way Jesus was sent, Jesus became the pattern and the model for our sending. Now look at Ephesians 5, 1. We are, we are commanded in that scripture to follow God. We are commanded to mimic God. We are commanded to imitate God. Whatever we see God doing, that's what he wants us to do. That's what he commands us to do. Jesus was sent into the world not to serve, he wasn't sent to, to be served, but to serve. He wasn't sent, let me say that again, he wasn't sent to be served, but to serve, and give his life a ransom for many. That's found in Mark 10, 45. And in the same way, he sent us to not be served, but to also serve others. And we do that by laying aside our self-interest our needs, our wants, our desires, and look to the needs and interests of others. That's how we do that. Yeah. It's not about us and what we need, but it's about us going out into the highways and the byways, seeking these people, you know, asking them what they need and what, 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 how can I help you? What do you need? Knowing we are commissioned to serve also pro provides power in service. When Jesus was commissioned at his baptism in Matthew 3, 13 through 17, he set aside his own divine powers. He set his powers aside. And instead, he lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he set his, his, his divine powers, he set his, his stuff aside. And he relied totally, solely on the power of the Holy Spirit to lead him and to guide him. This means that we are also capable of modeling Jesus' servant life. When we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. We got to lay it aside and allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. We want to be effective when we're out in the, on, the, on the highways and the byways and we're compelling these people to come in. We want to be effective, y'all. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're, we're in alignment with Jesus Christ and what he is calling us to do and what he is telling us to do. Yeah. It's time out for time out. We got to, we got to, as the evangelist said, we got to go. We got to go, y'all. We, we, we can't afford to, to sit back and be lackadaisical anymore. It's time for us to go. Yeah. It's time for us to be thrusted out into the highways and the byways and do 
this commission, what it is telling us to do. Jesus called 12 ordinary young men to become his closest disciples. Asking them to walk away. He asked these, these ordinary men to walk away from jobs, to walk away from families. But guess what? They did it. They did it without hesitation. They did it. So why is it so hard for us to, to just do it? <laughs> we like the disciples. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Kathy. <laughs> when God commissions us, we can find assurance in knowing we don't rely on our own strength and ability. We should rely solely on the Holy Spirit and His guidance. Um, the Holy Spirit will enable us to feel what he's stirring our hearts to do. So he's going to enable us to fulfill whatever he's stirring our hearts to do. Right. We have been commissioned as the disciples were commissioned to continue the work of God by taking the gospel to every person throughout the world to make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. And it involves building and multiplying disciples. Get this part, y'all. It involves building and multiplying disciples so that they can in turn spread the gospel and make gener disciples generation after generation. It's a continual continuation. It doesn't stop, it continues on. Amen. And, and even thinking about the disciples, you know, God commissioned them to do all these things, but a lot of them came to Jesus Christ in private and asked them, well, God, why wasn't I able to cast out that demon? Why wasn't I able to heal that person? And a lot of it falls on their unbelief or them not having faith. And over in Matthew, Matthew 17, verse 20, the Bible reminds us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, a mustard seed, it said we can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for us. Yes. The faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest seed. Yep. But when I believe when it grows, it becomes the biggest, one of the biggest. But it, it starts out small. And that's all God is requiring us to have is that faith. The size of a mustard seed. We can do so much Amen. with just that little mustard seed faith. We don't even know what we are capable of doing, y'all, with, with just that little faith. Amen. God did not commission us to Christianize the nations. He called us to disciple and evangelize them. So our responsibility is to preach and to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's the Holy Spirit's responsibility to, that makes our witness effective. Our job is to preach and to teach. Leave the rest to the Holy Spirit to make our witness effective. Jesus warned his followers that following him, it wouldn't be for the faint of heart. It wouldn't be for the faint of heart. It wouldn't be for the coward. It wouldn't be for the one who was um, no faith, lacking faith, fearful. It wasn't for that one. It wasn't for the faint of heart. And the Bible tells us... Um, if you come after me, you have to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah. That person who desires to save his life is going to lose it, but he who loses his life for Jesus' sake, they're going to find it. And don't get me wrong, a lot of disciples did give their life for Jesus, but a lot, a lot of them didn't. They turned back because they thought, thought the cost of discipleship was too much, too much to bear. So they missed out, y'all. They missed out with the portion. God, however, is deeply invested in the growth and transformation of his followers. And part of that growth involves being challenged and stretched. I know y'all don't like to hear that, being challenged and stretched. But that's the only way that we're going to grow. That's the only way we're going to be, be, that's just it. That's the only way we're going to grow. It's to be challenged and stressed. I can't think of another word, but that's the only way we're going to get from point A to point B to point C to point D. We have to be challenged and stretched. We cannot stay in the same spot. We cannot stay in the same comfortable spot and think we're going to grow. 
We are not going to grow just staying in this spot. We have to put one foot in front of the other and go. We have to go. Jesus' closest followers did just that. They stepped out on faith. They left everything behind. They left those things that was comfortable to them. They left those things that was familiar to them. And we as God's people, we got to get to a place where we can leave those things that we are familiar with, that we are comfortable with, to go after God wholeheartedly. We got to leave some stuff behind. We got to leave that baggage behind. In order to get a fresh start, we got to leave it back there and move forward. We got to move forward. And in doing so, they learn from, the disciples learned from Jesus' teachings, and they, went, they got to witness his miracles, and went out into the world, they were equipped, they were empowered, and they were entrusted to preach God's gospel, and to do all the things that they saw God do. They were equipped, they were empowered, and they were entrusted. Why? Because when God commissioned them, they followed him. And I think about, <laughs> I think about um, Jesus when he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, when Simon, Simon Peter and Andrew were um, casting their net. Right. And um, I, I can imagine it was just an ordinary day. They in their boats, trying to get some fish, trying to go home and cook a meal, frying up some catfish and some bluegill and some perch. <laughs> Hear me out. <now? laughs> This is just an ordinary day. Ordinary day. They at work, casting their nets, fishing. And Jesus came up to them, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. What did they do? What did the Bible say they did? It said they immediately, that's the word, they immediately followed him. And then he went a little further and saw James and Ze James and was it Zebedee? Yeah, James and Zebedee in the boat also. He told them, follow me. What did they do? They immediately followed Jesus. They left their father behind. Like I said, they left jobs, they left families, they left everything and followed God because they trusted God. They trusted God and they followed him. So they didn't, they didn't find no fish that night because they, they left it and they followed Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we reason within ourselves? I'm almost done, y'all. Why do we reason within ourselves? Doubt, we second guess, we question. We reason within ourselves. Why do we do that? We even take a step up, Lord. Lord, is that you? Why do we do that? I have the answer. It's important that we learn to hear the voice of God. All right. And first off, we got to belong to God in order to know and hear his voice. Yeah. John 10, 27 says, to hear God's voice, we must belong to him. So we have to belong to God in order to hear his voice. It's so many voices out here in the world tugging on us and pulling on us. Do it this way, do it this way. But the one and most important voice that matters the most is the voice of God. The voice of God will not steer you wrong. These other voices are going to steer you wrong. Just like Satan, he's going to steer you wrong if you allow him to. If you're not serving God, you're serving somebody. And Satan's desire, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And it says he want to even sift us like wheat, y'all. Yeah. That's deep. deep. Yeah. Those who hear God's voice and those who belong to him, they know his voice because they know him as their shepherd. He's their shepherd. So if we are to recognize God's voice, we must belong to him. We hear his voice when we spend quality time in the Bible. We hear God's voice when we study his word. We hear God's voice when we meditate on his word. The more we meditate and the more we study, the more familiar we become with the voice of God. As he said, his sheep know his voice. 
and they will not answer to the voice of anybody else. But it comes through daily, daily practice. It's a daily practice we have to study. We have to meditate. And I'm not saying you have to, to read the whole Bible in one day or, or chapters after chapter. Find you a little nugget in there, one of your favorite scriptures, and just meditate on it. It don't take much. But find you those scriptures that you can meditate on throughout the day. And if it's hard for you to do it that way, to remember, get you some little stickies and write them on that, you know, on that little, if you have a hard time remembering or retaining, write them on those little scriptures, those little verses. That way, where you're at work or wherever you're at, you can go back over or you can look at them on your keyboard or on your computer. And it becomes embedded in you. Amen. And I'm glad Sister Tracy here. <laughs> Because I was going to talk about, you know, employees at a bank, they have been trained to know counterfeit money by studying genuine money. Am I right, Mr. Tracy? They study that genuine money so closely that it's easily to spot a fake when it comes through. And just like us, we should be able to spot those that are fake. When they're coming to us with the word that is not correct, we should be able to spot a fake just like that. When we know that ain't the word of God, we should be able to spot it just like that. Why? Because we have studied. Why? Because we have meditated on the word of God. I think about Samuel. He doubted the voice, hearing the voice of God. When Eli had to tell him, yes, it was the voice of God. Even Gideon had a, a, a personal um, encounter with God. And he still doubted. He asked for a sign, not one time, but three times. That it was the voice of God. We can't do that. It's now time that we know the voice of God so that we can go forward and do the commission that he has called us to do. Yes. When we are listening for God's voice, how can we know that he is the one speaking? Well, first of all, we got something that Samuel and Gideon didn't have. We got the Bible. We have the inspired word of God. And it says the Bible is infallible. The, the Bible is error proof. Yeah. So we got the word of God as our road map. The, the Bible, I'm sorry, as our road map. Right. We got the Bible to direct us. Yeah. And when we're unfamiliar or unsure about things, let's go to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about it. Yeah. God will never lead us contrary to what he is telling us in his word. He will never do that. So stop when you think you you know you're feeling a certain way or you um not sure about something this bible is all you need to lead you in the dark the right way that you need to go we may feel that we are unlikely candidates or unqualified to be commissioned by god we do feel that way and it's okay to feel that way but God is not looking for perfect people. He's not looking for perfect people. Was his disciples perfect? No. They were tax collectors. They were a lot of things. But he's not looking for, for the perfect person. God is going to qualify those who he called. I think that's the right, yeah, that's the right way to say it. He's going to qualify and equip those he called. So... Again, we can't use these excuses to not want to do right and get in the line and get in position to follow God. And, and, and like I said, a lot of times we might use these excuses because we don't want to do right. Because we want to sin. We, want, we don't want to give up our life of, 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 of whatever it is to follow God. We don't want it, but the choice is ours. It's up to us. If we're going to follow God or not. Right. God is looking for those who are willing to set aside their personal comforts and interests to follow him and share in his ministry. He wants obedient, focused, and committed followers right. who will not only trust him but will submit to his authority and way of doing things. Even when it's uncomfortable or uneasy. 
Even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's uneasy, he is looking for followers that are going to be obedient. He is looking for, uh, for followers that's not going to be murmurs and complainers. He is looking for followers that is just going to say, Lord, send me. I'll go, as Isaiah said. Send me, Lord. I'll go. He, not, he, he don't want to hear the complainer or, Lord, I got to go do this first, and then I'll follow you. He's looking for that person like Simon and Andrew them in that boat. They immediately followed him. And he is looking for us to immediately follow him in this commission. He's looking for that person. He's looking for that one again that's going to say, Lord, send me, I'll go. We have to go when God commands us to go. He has given us a mandate to go. And he has everything we need to equip us and to make us effective servants. Every time God calls us to do anything, he assures us that he will be with us. Even as he assured Moses in Exodus 33, 14, when he said that his presence would go with him. And sometimes we fail to remember that God is omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. He's omniscient, meaning he's all-knowing. And he's omnipresent, which means he's always going to be with us. So again, no excuse. God is with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is always going to be with us to lighten the load. He wants to be our burden bearer. For 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us to cast our cares on the Lord because he wants to be our burden bearer. So when we fill in all these type of ways, cast it to the Lord so that our minds can be free so that we can follow God and do the commission that he has called us to do. In closing, therefore when we submit to God and simply obey and go, when he gives us a mandate, he will go before us to make our path straight. Psalms 119, 105. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So he's giving us the direction. He's making the way. He's making our path straight, y'all. We just got to go. We can always be confident that God will assure full responsibility for our success whenever we obey. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I said praise God. Thank you.